the orders were both of them. Yeah. Oh, really? And now we're talking about them together. Okay, we'll get started. Uh, our main topic today. Yeah. Excuse me, our main topic today is going to be the Amazon Echo Dot and Google Google Home. Excuse me, we'll, we'll get started. Hey, that's okay for people to go back and get food and, and wander around, so feel free to do that. Uh, but our main topic is the Amazon Echo Dot and Google Home. Mike Griffin from the Apple SIG uh, is here. He'll be giving the presentation, and I'll be helping him a little bit there. Uh, before we get to the main presentation, we'll cover a few uh, club things. Uh, I mentioned uh, we have subs today and cookies and that and back. Uh, feel free to go back there and eat and uh, do things as necessary. There's no projector there, Mike. You didn't have to dock. <laughs> I want to give a big thank you. Uh, Stan's uh, usually the one who orders and gets everything together. And he, he ordered everything this year, but then he had a family emergency with his father, I believe, uh, in the hospital. So he couldn't be here today. Uh, so I want to thank Paul. Paul Ebert uh, took over uh, some of the duties there that Stan had. And then we've got Jim Beardsley in back there. He's got his hand up there. And I think Al Rivar, it is Al there. And, yeah. and uh, all the people that helped set up on that, thank you very much. So feel free, uh, this is informal. You can go back and get food or cookies or, or whatever there. Uh, our next meeting is Wednesday, May 17th, and that'll be in the 275 Caribbean. Uh, so it won't be in the Baltic room here. It'll be over in the room over there. And that'll be on home networking, and I'll be giving the presentation. I'll be talking about, I recently went through and redid my whole house and uh, set it up. So I'll be talking about that. I'll also talk, be talking about uh, some of the other new things that have come out since we last presented this a couple years ago, uh, mesh networks and uh, uh, other settings there. Uh, we also have a monthly Mac SIG meetings and the next one for that is this Friday, April 21st and Mike uh, leads the Mac SIG and like we mentioned before, if you have an iPhone, an iPad, you, any, anything Mac there, it's worthwhile attending the Mac SIG. You'll get the latest information, ask questions, solve problems, see what's going on there. And uh, Mike usually sets the agenda right before the meeting, and they're interesting uh, topic. A top secret, he says, so uh, lots of stuff going on there. Okay, our officers, uh, Jim Holman uh, is our president in front there. Linda Brown, I don't see Linda, uh, is our vice president. Paul Ebert, and uh, back there setting things up. He's our membership secretary and chief sandwich coordinator there. <laughs> yeah. And Mike Griffin, who's presenting today, he's our treasurer and uh, leads the MACSIG. Uh, Stan Miller uh, is our secretary. Andrew Pertusi is our communication coordinator. And my name is Tom Kreitzer. I'm a director at large. Uh, members old and new, like Paul was saying, uh, if you want to pay your dues, uh, you can pay your dues uh, either by handing it to Paul there. Uh, also, a reminder, if you're changing your email, if you're retiring from 3M or changing your provider, uh, make sure you notify us so that we can keep in touch. Suggestions for topics, uh, you can email uh, your topic suggestions to any, anyone on the board or talk to us. And if you'd like to volunteer to present on particular hardware or software that you're using, it could be something at work or at home, uh, we're always looking for that. If you don't want to present, uh, we have a monthly eBytes newsletter, and you can write a short, meaning a sentence or two, or long, a couple of pages, or as many pages as you want, and we'll put it in our monthly newsletter. Out on our website, uh, we do uh, publish our meeting slides. Uh, we usually have handouts. Uh, today we don't have a handout because it's more of a demo and, and talk there. 
Uh, and then uh, we're recording the meetings, so most of the meetings are available uh, where you can see the slides and the uh, audio from them. We also have a deal section, our monthly eBytes newsletter, so everything is uh, out there at, at your disposal there. And the link uh, is available in the emails that we send to the members. Any club questions before we get to the main topic? Okay. I'll invite Mike up here and our main topic today is the Amazon Echo and the Echo, uh, for those not familiar, is uh, the tall one. This is the first device that was introduced, what, in 2014? Three years ago. Yeah, three years ago, uh, $180, a uh, combination Bluetooth speaker kind of a... Uh, and that, and then since then, they've uh, Amazon has come up with this tap. Uh, so they're also they're still selling the Echo. They have this tap, and the latest uh, uh, one is called the Amazon Dot. And this is the dot. Uh, this is uh, the dot that I have, and all it really needs to function is a plug-in. Uh, so you have a plug-in that goes to your your outlet. Now, Jim Beardsley brought his in. This is his Amazon dot here. And this has a little portable. You can see there's a little connection between here. This is the battery. So this makes it portable. Uh, you still have to connect to a Wi-Fi network, but uh, now you could take it in the car, you could take it to the PC club meeting, you could take it to all different places. And the dots uh, have been very popular because of the price point. It's a $50, uh, $50 device there. Uh, just last year, the end of last year, I believe it was, Google came out with its device uh, called the Google Home. And it's uh, you know about halfway in between the Echo and, and the dot and uh, uh, has a combination speaker and, and everything there. So... Uh, these, all, all of these devices are combinations of microphones and speakers. Uh, microphones to pick up sounds and commands, and then speakers to dispense it back to you. And they connect uh, through, the, through Wi-Fi to the Internet, to the Amazon uh, connects to something called Alexa, and Google connects to something called Google Assistant. You can come up here, Mike. <laughs> we will probably be trading back and forth as we go through the slides. Um, very short comment about the Mac SIG. We're probably going to really hit this topic on Friday, but all of the main Apple applications, GarageBand, iMovie, their word processor, spreadsheet, and presentation software, it's now free whether you have a uh, tablet, iPhone, or a Mac. So we're going to hit that pretty heavily. It just happened. Um, so shall we do the next slide, Tom? How it works. Do you want to continue? I, I don't know. <laughs> we haven't quite worked out our, our handoff here. Uh, <laughs> we, we have a little dance number at the end. Um, well, does everybody know what the cloud is? Yeah. Most people don't, but they advertise it enough. So it's a fancy way of doing both storage and computing on a bunch of servers that's independent of your location, basically. And uh, they can scale it bigger and smaller. So what happens in this case, um, Amazon started with the concept that you talk to your device and the device actually sends a Wi-Fi signal to your router that goes to a cloud of servers that tries to figure out what you're asking. It does like a voting process and determines this is most likely what they're asking about and then will pull resources off the internet to give you an answer. Uh, sometimes that can be fun, sometimes that can be very powerful. We'll talk about some of the things you can do with it. Um, I can uh, take Jim's Echo Dot 
and ask it, uh, Alexa, what do you think of this audience? I don't have an opinion on that. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa, tell us a joke. Why did the chicken cross the road halfway? She wanted to lay it on the line. <laughs> okay, you get what you pay for. <laughs> but basically, um, going back through this, uh, Alexa identifies your name, it analyzes the customer request, sends it up and around, it does a voting process with the uh, servers out there, and then it processes the request and returns it back to you. You notice the response time was about a second, two seconds. That's the amazing part. We'll talk about the computing horsepower that has changed the ability to even just recognize the voice. Um, so Alexa can give you a voice response or Alexa can actually control something else like lights in your house and things like that as a result of the response. And there's something I won't spend much time on, but it's called IFT. I-F-T-T-T. -T -T. It's a fancy way to uh, use a web service to take one set of commands from one device and link them to another set of commands for another device. So think of it like a, an extension to the Google Home, to the Echo, and other things that are out there, the light bulbs you can control with your phone and all of that. Uh, but that's making this also a very powerful and using commands that don't exist within the device itself. <coughs> so, a um, little bit of history. Uh, we did some digging. We did not have the help of uh, Alexa to do this digging. We did it the old-fashioned way. We used the internet. <laughs> but uh, back in 1952, is anybody here in 1952? <laughs> All right, there's a hand in the back, good. <laughs> um, Bell Labs developed recognition for numbers. Why would Bell Labs care about some computer recognizing numbers? Got it. So you could recognize basically 10 words, uh, matches the number set for the telephone, uh, does not do the asterisk or anything else, but uh, that was the start. In the 60s, a guy named Raj Reddy developed continuous voice recognition. By this I mean, before then you could say it, and then you had to take a break to say the next word, and take another break to say the next word. Um, Raj developed a method where you can actually speak continuously, and it could pick the words out of what you're saying. Uh, the Soviets get credit in the 60s also for something called dynamic time slicing. It's taking what you're seeing, slicing it into little pieces and comparing it to a database of what it thinks that piece means and then it reassembles it. So they got us up to 200 whole words. Woohoo! Um, DARPA funded some work in the 70s and this really kicked it off. Uh, they had a speech understanding research project and with the help of a lot of universities, got up to a thousand words. IBM developed recognition for up to 20,000 words by combining a few techniques. And in the 90s, the first speaker independent uh, large vocabulary system was developed called the Sphinx 2. So this means Tom can talk to Alexa, I can talk to Alexa. Your neighbor's kid yelling through the window can talk to Alexa, and it doesn't care. That might be good, that might not be good. <laughs> and then adding neural networks and artificial intelligence has really made this extremely powerful today. And um, that gives you the ability to do a lot more than just have it repeat your words back to you, but actually parsing sentences and determining what you are looking for. Time for a little break. Alexa. Alexa, what's the weather like today? Currently, in St. Paul, it's 48 degrees with mostly cloudy skies. Today, you can expect showers with a high of 53 degrees and a low of 43 degrees. Alexa, thank you. 
You're welcome. Okay. Yeah, I turned it. There's a mute button. So because he was saying Alexa all the time, he'd wake up and, and try and understand what he was asking. So I just muted it, essentially, if you don't want it waking up there. <laughs> you, you will also find if uh, Amazon commercials come on and the word Alexa comes on, that will wake up. So sometimes you want to mute it. Yeah, the first, the first versions, well, uh, you know, when people set it up, part of the setup, you connect it to your Amazon account, and by default, you can automatically place orders. So some of the news stories, when they were first showing stuff, were saying, look how easy it is to order a book. They were, I forgot which book they were uh, demonstrating, and they'd come on the news, and they'd say, uh, Alexa, order such and such a book, and all of these Alexas all over the country were ordering the book. Amazon is brilliant. So, <laughs> so they've uh, now they've got additional features where you can have it validate. It won't order until you validate it with your email or some other things, but it can be as easy as, as just doing that because the other case would be if you want to order a pizza or stuff like that, just give it your command, order the same thing that you had last time, bang, it'll order it, it'll give it the credit card number, it'll give everything and, and pass it on. So uh, I spend a lot of time looking at computers and their development, and uh, I greatly simplified this, but in 76, the best computer we had was a uh, digital equipment PDP-10 series, four megabytes of RAM, okay? My phone has about a, a thousand times that amount of RAM, and uh, but I could speak to it and it would take hour and a half for it to decode what I said in 30 seconds. Um, today, you've got a gig of RAM and a 64-bit processor in your phone, okay? The cloud helps, the network helps, but you've got enough horsepower in your phone to do a lot of this work um, for it. Bless you. Uh, this, this will not be an Alexa thing, but just to show you what's in your phone. Uh, one of my favorite apps is iTranslate Voice, okay? I don't want to upgrade now, but thank you for asking. <laughs> so I translate voice, you're not seeing this, but uh, you basically have up to 40 different languages it will translate from and to, and basically I wanted to show you the capability that's in your phone. Good morning, PC Club. Okay, that took how long? <coughs> uh, the other feature of this is if you also have the same app on your phone, I can speak in my language and it comes out in yours and vice versa. So the Star Trek Universal Translator is not that far off. And it even works with the Android phones. Because Mike's got everything Apple, but... There are, <laughs> there are uh, Google equivalents, let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. So we're... Translate voice. voice. Yeah. And they have uh, some versions that don't require internet connectivity. You can build phrase books so when you travel to Europe, you don't always have to use data. Um, but this app cost me $3. So a little bit of uh, what's behind it. In the, uh, it's similar for the uh, Echo Dot and the Echo and the Google Home. They have an array of microphones. So if you've got this playing a lot of music and it's playing loudly, it can still pick you, your command out <coughs> in spite of having the music. And uh, so part of that's they have an array. They have some intelligence inside that picks among the microphones and then determines 
what's separate from what it's already putting out as a speaker. And uh, as a result, you can ask a question from any direction. There are people who are doing these crazy experiments, like being in a building across the street and aiming a megaphone at somebody's window with the uh, Amazon Echo, and uh, it works. So, so there, can, <coughs> there can be 20, 30 people speaking, and it's smart enough. When I say Alexa, you'll see the lightest point there pointed to where I was. So if I move over here and now say Alexa, it, it, the microphones hone in and find the directional. That way they're able to. I put to... on your shopping list. <laughs> it's not, it's Jim's, it's Jim's. Uh, I wouldn't connect mine in here. <laughs> what else did you want, Jim? <laughs> uh, let's see, let's pick somebody from the middle row and see how it works. Uh, anybody willing to volunteer? Just say, uh, okay, uh, Alexa, what's the time? I, I understand. 11.52 a.m. Okay. What time is it today, Alexa? You first have to wake it up with the command. Alexa, what time is it today? The time is 11.52 a.m. And so, Jim, ask it for the news or weather. Alexa, play Roy Orbison. Shuffling songs by Roy Orbison. <laughs> All right. Alexa, stop. <laughs> I like that song. <laughs> All right, so you got the picture. He's about 40 feet away. It's got a good range. It has a lot of uh, capability. There's a bit of humor built into it. Um, it's a... Uh, it can be a useful tool for a number of people. We can talk a little bit later about um, smart home sorts of things like light bulbs and latches and all of that. But if you have uh, like an older parent or something and they want to turn on the light in the kitchen before they go in there so they don't trip, they can speak to Alexa. Alexa, turn on reading light. Okay. I just turned a reading light on in my living room. <laughs> I hope no one's at home. <laughs> yeah. Besides the cost of the device, is there a monthly cost or anything? The, the, for the basic device, no. But there are some things that require subscription, like you can do audible books. Uh, you can do a number of, like, uh, you need a subscription to play music. You have to be in some account, and we could talk a little bit about that. Uh, well, yes, you do. No, I don't. You uh, don't. Uh, there, yeah, typically, typically the music, uh, if you wanted the full catalog, you'd subscribe to Amazon Music, seven ninety five a month. Amazon lets you upload 250 songs. So what I'll do is I'll put my current playlist out there, 250 songs for free. And I can play any of those, I can shuffle them, I can do anything from there for free without a monthly, uh, monthly fee. Okay, here's a question. Presumably then you can bring them with you wherever you go when you have your music there. If you want enhanced um, speaker capability, are you limited to what's going to come out of there? I've got the answer. I figured you would. <laughs> sure. So the, the full echo has a pretty robust speaker and it's very good. Uh, the speaker in the dot is less so. However, you can talk to any Bluetooth speaker with the dot and then you can make it your hi-fi uh, connection. Hi-fi, what is that? There's a, there's a minimal speaker in here. Bluetooth, you can connect to any other Bluetooth device. Or there's an audio plug, and you can plug it into another another uh, like a, speaker. If you have like PC speakers with a little eighth-inch plug, you can or also plug it system, in. stereo system, right? Know, things like that. The I guess one other clarification: 
You asked, bring it anywhere. You can bring it anywhere, but again, this device only takes your speech and connects to the cloud. So you have to have a Wi-Fi connection. So either you're going to use a phone, you're going to use the 3M guest network, you're going to use the network within your house. You have to have a network to connect to because the real uh, deciphering of what you say and what gets done happens in the cloud. It doesn't happen in here. There's there's next to nothing in here. But nowadays there's multiple ways of Andy, Andy. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, my question is, does it have voice recognition so that I can turn something on or off at Jim's house? Can he lock it so it's holding his voice? And is there a potential problem with that? Uh, well, there's secure there's security systems that you can set up passcodes and things like that because that's one of the things people were talking about. If I hook this up to my garage door opener and all I had to say was, Alexa, open up the garage door, well, somebody could just I'm yell through the sure window. <laughs> Alexa could, could, I could yell through the, through the door, open up the garage door, and then the garage door would open or the front door, you know, with a right. smart lock. Right. So there are ways of, of locking it down. But for the most part, the beauty is it doesn't have to be trained to each voice. Right. Yeah, and you see that as a beauty. I see that as <laughs> well you I might be listening to classical music all day if John is telling you that. <laughs> that, that, that no 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 it, it's, it, it's an excellent point, but part of the um, direction for these things is it's not identifying your voice. I mean, technically, voice recognition means your voice, but that's not how it's used here. It's more speech recognition. So uh, it will not lock in on just your voice. However, as Tom says, you can add security features, so you have to give it a verbal password or something else to do certain functions like uh, order the pizza. Right. Or Jim's bank account. Uh, <laughs> transfer yeah. money. <laughs> yeah. As a security, instead of a question, you give it up. Yeah. Not to my knowledge. No, it, it, it translates the voice into a uh, command, like a little app, if you will. And it will only respond to the, the wake up. The wake up there is the word Alexa, the word mm -hmm. Amazon, and then you can customize one other word that you want to use. So if you said, oh, sesame, or, you know, whatever, you could you could have it remember that. Yeah. There, there are people who are asking both uh, Amazon and Google if they can't customize the wake-up word so that it's not so obvious. It's like when you get a router and you bring it home for your network, the password is basically... A one, two, three, four, I think, and anybody can get into that unless you change the password. So people are saying, can we change the wake up word? It's not there yet. Jim? You can, you can now change the wake up word. Yeah, I, that, yeah. That, those are the three ways. You can say Amazon, you can say Alexa, or you can customize it to whatever you want. I could have customized oh, mine. Right, right. So this is, it's a year ago that wasn't there. Uh, and just from a uh, technology standpoint, half of the magic is not just the voice recognition. It's what's called far field voice recognition, which is what's up on the board. So picking up your voice and making sense of it in a field of noise and reflection from the walls and all of that is non-trivial. And so they have had to take the speech recognition part and then figure out what to do to not only locate where you're coming from, but to get rid of the noise so it can give you a uh, useful response to your command. Is there a setup procedure or is it to use out of the box? Well, there, there's a setup procedure. So once you get this device, the first thing that you usually do is plug it in to give it power. <clears throat> when you give it power, what it's going to try and do is connect to your home network. Uh, then what you have to do either on a laptop, a phone, a tablet, whatever, you have to pull up 
the website for Alexa or the Alexa app. So I have like the app on my smartphone or tablet or whatever you want. And since my phone and tablet and that are connected to the same wireless network there, it'll automatically kind of pop up and say, I've already found this device here. Do you want to connect it to your Amazon account? Because all of this is tied to your Amazon account. And now it registers that device. And then you can additionally go in and configure it to point to other services. So you can tie it to your, you can open it up to order things on Amazon. You can connect it to uh, Spotify. You can connect it to Pandora. You can connect it to these other services by putting in your account numbers in that. Yeah. And you can decide that the other piece of that is you end up with an app on your phone so you can configure it from wherever your phone is. Uh, but in addition, you get uh, weekly, roughly weekly emails, what's new with Alexa. So it gives you different functions and things you can do. And, and it will also get, give you a list of the things that were asked for on your device. So if you were asking for the news and you were asking for stock quotes and you were asking for the twin score and you were asking, and then it will maybe pop up and say, "Did you? is this correct? Right. And if you say yes, that helps that cloud service now identify that whenever you ask for this stuff, this is what you really need. Yeah. So it, it builds up kind of an artificial intelligence by you, re, you interacting with it and saying, yes, you were correct when you did this. Or I, when I say mom, I want this person. And when I say this, I want that person. So it can build up that smarts there. Just like your phone, if you've ever used your phone, uh, so your phone for Siri and stuff like that, uh, I use my phone and I'll say, uh, dial sister. Well, you know, how's it know who my sister is? Well, it created an association between the word sister and, <clears throat> excuse me, an account that I have out there that has a phone number for my sister. And uh, briefly, if you do get commands like open garage door and you know you're not at home, now you've got some flags for you and you can also tie this into um, the webcams, into security systems, other things, but you've got at least a little flag that something funny is happening and Alexa picked it up. So we'll talk about this, but it's always listening for its name. And uh, therefore, Unless people, you people it. <laughs> right? People, people think that it's uh, always broadcasting what you say, and that's not what it does. But once it hears its name, of course, it's going to process whatever comes after that. People think the government can listen to you on this device, and the government can't listen to you on this device. Uh, yeah. However, the government, if they, if, they, if they went to Amazon and said, because there's a current trial, we want to get all of the commands that it did do for the last month, they'd be able to give those to the government and say, this is what that person asked for and did on their device for the last month. The commands, nothing more. And that's all stored in the cloud. That's all stored in the cloud, and that's those emails that Mike talked about that you get. And they actually do research, just like a Google search. They, they do statistics on, uh, uh, for advertising and everything else, and what are people asking for, what's the hot topic, so what's, what's going on. So all of that is mined and stored on the cloud. You can delete that, you can go out there and you can get rid of your history there, just like you can for your Google search history or stuff like that. Now, way in the back, you've been ask, raising for a little bit. Yeah, I, 
I think the answer is probably yes. Uh, there's a couple of links in the back of this presentation, but there are a number of things I've seen which relate to the elderly and making them more independent. And uh, then I saw in the news last night, there's actually uh, uh, like a charity in Minneapolis that um, takes the high tech to uh, help the elderly configure their room or their house and they give them classes and things like that. Uh, but uh, I think the answer is it's, it's out there. Uh, I don't have a specific link today, but we have more general links that can lead you in that direction. Uh, behind him. No, the, the connection to the music uh, is fairly limited. I mentioned Spotify. You can subscribe to Spotify. You can subscribe to Amazon, the Amazon library for the 795. You can upload 255 songs free of charge to the Amazon service. It cannot play off of my phone here. Now, I suspect what will happen, though, is, is there are some ways. Uh, I, I use the service Google, Google Play, and I store my songs up there, and I have 50,000-plus songs up there. It cannot directly play that. If I set up my own little Google service and task, there's tasks, and we'll talk, talk about that a little bit later. There's, with, there's little programs written that I can ask Alexa to run this program up on the cloud, and then that cloud will connect to other services, return stuff, and then play it back on this device. So it's, they're getting smarter and smarter, but by default, it cannot play off of your iTunes. It doesn't connect to the iTunes account. It doesn't connect to this device. It's connecting to the cloud, the services up on the internet. You guys have a program with more slides? You have more slides to go through? Yeah. And then I do my standard request to this audience. I would like to hear your entire program, then shoot questions at them. Do okay. Yeah, we can. We, we don't have to shoot them at us. Don't, don't shoot. <laughs> Alexa, don't shoot. And now you've got me wondering if the Bluetooth connectivity for the dot wouldn't let you do some streaming and then you'd have to Bluetooth out to a better speaker. But um, it's a good question. Uh, in general, though, you've got to have a service that it supports. So your daughter might be a genius. Um, so some of this we'll go through quickly. Uh, functional comparison, the biggest thing is these are the first devices. They're really computers, but first devices were the voice control is your main input method. No keyboards, no mice, nothing like that. Um, and so that's part of the magic and why this kind of caught people by surprise a few years ago. Uh, it's always listening for the wake command. We discussed that. You have to have a Wi-Fi network. Um, having a Wi-Fi network into a dial-up is not going to work. Uh, uh, I, I can't laugh at that. I have a friend who is just now getting uh, high-speed internet in their house. It affects job searches. It affects a lot of things. Um, and then just a, a side comparison here. You notice way over on the right, you've got other. So oh, you click. I did <laughs> click. Let's go back. Way over on the right, uh, you've got other. These are voice recognition um, programs, mostly with phones, and there are others I have not listed here. They've got four or five that are meant now for your future cars, but they're not really meant to be far field recognition, standalone devices, but I included them just because you will hear the names Cortana and 
Siri and Bixby and a few others as you go forward. Um, so in your house, you might just chain all of these names together and figure out which device it wakes up. I don't know. Um, but uh, far field command is true for the Amazon Echo, the Echo Dot, and the Google Home. Uh, and these are very simplistic, but the pros, really nice audio quality with a full-sized Amazon Echo. Uh, you can play music or have it speak a book to you. It's great. The uh, Echo Dot, though, is, what, one-fourth the price, roughly? Yeah, at, at fifty dollars, it certainly is attractive to put in multiple rooms because typically you're dealing with it within one room. So if you have it in the kitchen, uh, you are. It's not like you're going to be in the bedroom at the other end of the house and and ask it to do things. So uh, if you're going to use it to control lights and to do your news and things like that, you may end up with one in the kitchen, one in the family room. Uh, one in the bedroom, uh, you yeah. can actually buy them in sets of four or five. They sell them. Uh, Th this is good for Amazon. Um, and then uh, trade-offs, you know, we've talked about some of this, but uh, security, somebody yelling through the window, if you've got your door locks tied to Alexa, uh, they can just say unlock front door, things like that. Um, Speaker quality in the dot isn't the same as the others. The uh, There's uh, Michael Milney. Is he here? Michael, thank you. Uh, he sent me a lot of uh, notes on Google Home, and one of the limitations was uh, you can have one Google account per device. So if you've got your account in your daughter's account or your account in your wife's account, you have to pick one. Um, and this may change in time. These things are always in flux, but that's, uh, those are just some very quick, simple, top-level things to be aware of. So if you go to the Echo, uh, you've got some common tasks. It will play music. Uh, here's a list of the ones that it does discuss. Tom mentioned Spotify. It's up there. You can control your smartphone. Uh, there are many standards for smart home uh, interfaces and hubs and all of that. Um, and it doesn't mean to say IT works. That should be it works with other smart devices. Uh, Philips makes light bulbs. You can change the color temperature of the light based on the time of day. Uh, you can turn them on and off. There's Wemo, Ecobee, Sensi. You can spend more money than... Um, you ever wanted on this stuff. There, there's no limit. Um, you can, pardon? Um, this, at this time, it does not talk about playing iHeartRadio, but um, I know you can do Google searches, so um, iHeartRadio is an app, and I don't think it directly supports it, but you may end up with um, this thing called IFT, where you can, it means uh, if this, then that, IFT. Uh, where you can basically have that linked to iHeartRadio by uh, sort of an indirect series of commands. And then you can do thousands of ebooks. Uh, you can do home math. Um, we can try something here. What is, four, sorry, Alexa, what is 14 times 14? 14 multiplied by 14 is 196. Okay. And so you can do cooking things, teaspoons, quarts, gallons, milliliters. You can do shopping lists and other things, now that we all know what uh, IFTTT is. Uh, we had a little video for you here, which I may be able to run. But basically, um, there's really good noise, noise immunity. One of my favorite commands is Alexa, stop. And we might, uh, this uh, is not playing, but uh, this was in my uh, family room. So I've got Yoda, I've got R2-D2, and the Alexa. They're all together. Uh, they're just not moving. Well, there we go. Alexa, what's the weather like tomorrow? <coughs> We'll try this again. Hang on. With a high of 47 no. and a low of 32. 
Thanks. Where's your speaker tab? Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe if it's going through the HDMI, probably. Alexa, <laughs> tell me a joke. The electron asked the photon. Did you well, if I can't hear it, I know you can't hear it. <laughs> but well, well, you get the idea. <laughs> you get the idea. <laughs> and then uh, we'll talk a little bit about Google Home. So um, I got most of this from Michael. Appreciate it. And uh, he says it does uh, daily briefings, weather, traffic, events on your calendar, and uh, the news. You can control smart home devices, so they are very similar types of devices. You can set a timer if you're cooking. Uh, it can tell you better get back in the kitchen because you're going to get smoke soon. Uh, you can stream radio, and Michael, is there any... Uh, does it do uh, iHeartRadio or any in particular? Um, definitely does tune in. Uh, I'm not sure about Okay. And it's and it's it, uh, I am a little familiar with it. I mean, it's for, it's certainly connected more towards mm -hmm. the Google services. So if you tend to you have an Android phone and have Google services, uh, uh, it it is very tightly coupled with all of that. Uh, one of the things that will continue on here is we'll talk about these tasks or the IFF, the programming side of it, where you can write these interfaces to other cloud services. Currently, the Google Home doesn't have that. So it's got its kind of set of stuff, uh, whereas the Amazon Dot is kind of an open source where they're attempting to let people write all this other stuff for it. Okay. And it doubles as a Chromecast speaker, if everybody knows what Chromecast is. Okay. And uh, so, any other comments? You've had it since, I think, November, you said? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've, I've never had the Amazon Echo or the other one with that, but I like it so far. I, I don't use it all the time, but it helps out in Sure, sure. Yeah, this is, this is a slide I put up here. So we talk about these programming or, or things like that. Uh, Amazon calls these skills. And uh, from three years ago when it started, we're now up to over 10,000 skills. Things like that have been mentioned before, answering questions. It's real good at answering questions. So your kids' homework or stuff like that, instead of doing a Google search or using the phone, they can just ask ask questions in there. It'll read the news and weather updates, and you can again customize it for which news or which uh, weather updates uh, you want to get stuff. Play music, stream podcasts, audio books, uh, to do lists. So I can say, Alexa, add pick up uh, toilet paper to my shopping list. It'll put an entry on my shopping list. Then I can go out here. And I can go into the Alexa app, I can check my shopping list, and I can see these are items that are on my shopping list. And, and this is handy because, again, uh, uh, wife could be at home, she could be adding things to the shopping list, you can be at work, you check it before you go, oh, I've got to pick these things up uh, from the shopping list there. We'll, we'll take questions kind of after just so that we make sure we get through everything. Almost, almost there. Almost there. So there's all these things. Let's go to the next one. These are the skills. So you can see uh, this chart over here. Uh, in first quarter of 2016, there were 135 of these skills that, uh, that, that Amazon Dot could do. This is how it rose to over 10,000 in less than a year there. And just like there's apps and things like that, you can go out and you can look at all these different skills and see what they uh, do. You can get people's ratings on them. Uh, these skills are, it used to be that you had to go, go out to the Alexa app and add that skill to make it available. Now you don't have to. Now they've got it where I can just wake up Alexa and I can say, uh, use the domino uh, skill and it'll automatically configure it. And if there's questions to set up an account or things like that, it'll step me through setting that up. So they've 
kind of tied all this stuff together and there's just this plethora of skills being added daily both some from corporations but also from individuals linking together uh, some of these uh, uh, cloud services and capabilities out there those are a couple of demo videos and <coughs> Uh, we yeah. can uh, we can probably take the questions and if there's time we sure. can show some of the demos or or that should we give this uh, one or two last uh, questions before we take questions uh, I've got I've got one Alexa what is calculus calculus has several different uses as a noun one a hard lump produced by the concretion of mineral salts found in hollow organs or ducts of the body. 2. An incrustation that forms on the teeth and gums. 3. The branch of mathematics that is concerned with limits and with the differentiation and integration of functions. So, as you can see, uh, you can, it's, it's probably explodes the mind, you can do a Google search on an Amazon product. But uh, you get the idea. Alexa, what's my calendar today? We'll see if Jim had anything on his calendar. <laughs> today, there are two events remaining. There is one event in progress. 3 MPCC lasts until 1 p.m. and then at 2 p.m. there's massage 245. <laughs> and it interfaces with I have I have Google Calendar, so it interfaces with my Google Calendar or most open calendars. There, it could be Hotmail, could be whatever. So when you configure it, you talked about setting it up. You're linking it to these other things. Now it has access to those accounts to do these other functions to read you your schedule and to do things. So it's very 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 powerful there. Questions? I have a question for Alexa. Alexa, when was your last software update? Didn't get it. One more time. <clears throat> Alexa, when was your last software update? I update automatically. So I'm always improving. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa, tell me a joke. What did the Admiral say to her Valentine? I worship you. <laughs> hey, there was a question here. Uh, can, can you uh, ask it to call a number or call an emergency? I don't believe. Yeah, because this isn't a phone and everything, it has to go through another service. And so that service, even though you can talk into it and you can hear things, again, to do a phone call, it has to have an account. It has to go through that service. Uh, so it's a little different than than your phone and, and things like that. We could try something, though. Alexa. Call home. I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. So that's what you would get. If you had a Google account, uh, like a Google number. Probably... Well, it's more of a connection to the service on the back end, uh, and that's that's the key there. And I'd be again, you run into security issues, and you run into other issues. Why some of the stuff is not connected? Because if it starts connecting, is there a login that has to be done to get you to that service? If there's no login, that means that anybody on any device would be able to use your telephone number or it'd look like your telephone number, you know, or, or what happens when you change your telephone or that. If there's a SIM chip in here. Well, all these have, that's to guarantee that that's the phone that's making the call there, that it's not this device or a thousand of these devices using the same number. How 
Well, it, it does know your location. So I asked it the weather earlier, and it said for St. Paul. So like with your phone, it tracks your location, and the default is going to be your local area. You might have to define differently 94.5 in San Diego. Yes, these these are exactly like apps. Some of them come from companies. So Domino wrote one for an interface to, right. to so sell their pizza. Is this open source where people are writing them? Anyone can. You can sit down. There's a language, and I can put them out there. Similar to iTunes. Uh, are I've screened by anybody before they're uploaded for Uh, is I would say they're as clean as what iTunes is. You have to go through Amazon's SDK. Right. And they do screen the apps before they allow them. So you have, to, you have to use their process to, get to develop your app. You use their process, uh, and there are tools that, that, that are open source, free of charge for people to work with. And it's like Mike said, it's it's this programming language where you can set up conditions and questions and answers and it's things like that. Then that somebody could write malicious software that would get introduced to your system through these apps. Well, again, you have a rating and stuff like that. So just like any app, you can look at the rating and you can see how many people have downloaded it, whether they like it or don't like it, uh, things like that. So you do have uh, that capability. It's, it's no better or no worse than any other app for an Android or an iPhone. Yes? I have the Alexa thing on my phone, but there's nothing in there. If I wanted to add a shopping list, do I go to that list on Amazon, or do I tell Alexa on my to put it on. I, I can't find the answer to the question I heard. Well, we'll see if Jim has linked it. Alexa, add to my shopping list to buy paper towels. I put paper towels on your shopping list. But how did shopping list get on there? It's, it's, on there it's, on it's a shopping list. You automatically, but you have to use the Alexa app. Uh, yeah, I have it on here. Yeah. But nothing's in there. No, but as soon now, now if I go to my phone or on my tablet and pull up the Alexa app, paper towels will be in my shopping. Room. Right. But how do you get them on her shop? No, she she'd have to use her her Amazon dot, which was linked to her list on her phone. Okay, it's so it'll be on shopping list. Is it going going to be under Alexa? Yes, or it'll be under Alexa. If you go to Alexa, if you go to Alexa, there's there's a whole uh, list on the far side of both configurations your your activities. and activities and things like that. And one of them is your your list. It's just called okay. list. Other questions? Yeah. No. Oh, I guess I've just used a single. Now, for the multiple accounts, it, it you know, Mike was talking about the first versions basically only supported one account for one person, whether it's music or things like that. The, the newer ones, most of the tasks now are accepting multiple accounts. So if you have a playlist and your daughter likes rock and roll or she likes the rap and you like jazz, you can set it up and you can say, uh, play my, you know, give your name this list and it will go to the account that's for that person. So because these things are constantly evolving, uh, almost all of these roadblocks are just changing the software up on the server a little bit. And now you've got additional capabilities. I'm going to actually pass this around and I'm sure it'll get back to me, but just give you an example of what the dot packaging looks like. Yeah. Uh, my wife designs some of the 
episode of Prime. Uh, you know what might be included with that that would be applicable to this? Well, what you can do with the, the connection to Amazon is you can place your order. So literally, uh, again, I can I can wake I won't wake it up because I don't want to cause problems for Jim there if he's got it connected. But I can say Alexa, order the paper towels from Amazon, and I can put it in any order. So I don't have to say a specific order of words or anything like that. It will place the order, and if I have it set in my configuration, it'll do it without any prompt or anything additional and that order will be immediately placed. So so you can connect it, you just have to watch out what you do. And the 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 joke with that, well not necessarily a joke, but uh, if you've got little kids, the little kids will see how easy it is to do and they can order anything. <laughs> But you can connect it to your Amazon account, and so that's, that's uh, uh, you know. But the, uh, the Amazon account, the Prime account, does not give you access to, to the music library. If you did want the music, that's a separate $7.95 a month for the music. Yeah? If you're ordering, like, paper towels, like, on Amazon, there's a million different paper towels, how is it? It looks at your past habits. So if, if you had ordered them in the past, then it'll know. If it hasn't, then uh, that's where, depending on how these cloud services are set up, the cloud services, uh, let me go back to here. So, so when we get back here, these cloud services are up here. Uh, depending on how the vendor wrote it, it's going to get translated and it's either going to be the customer sees a graphic representation or gets words back. Uh, and if there's additional questions that have to be asked or clarifications, it can ask that, those clarifying questions and move on. Yeah. And if you ordered Viva towels last time and decided you didn't like them, then you would have to say, Alexa, order Scott paper towels. And it might have a few questions for you, like 18 count or 24 count. But uh, that would be a way to modify your past you history. Like five star or, you know, uh, I'm not sure on know. that. Don't you know. also have clarifying. So, so if I say, Alexa, when do the Twins play? The Minnesota Twins. Alexa, when do the Minnesota Twins play? Last night the Twins lost to the Indians, 11-4. to 4. They'll play tonight at 7-10 p.m. at home against the Indians. Alexa, when's the game on Saturday? There are no events scheduled on Saturday, April 22nd. So, so what it knew is it kept the context that I was speaking to it about the Minnesota Twins. It knew that when I asked about Saturday, it checked for a Twins it's it's supposed to. Let me put it that way. It's supposed to keep the context. No, we're just a Oh, Dave. <laughs> yes, you're probably right there. It's, it's supposed to keep the context of what you were doing. So if there's follow-up questions to things, uh, you don't have to start, you know, the complete thing over again. So I was so smart. Ask which is better, Amazon Dot or Google Home. Yeah. Alexa, what's better, Amazon Dot or Google Home? Hmm. I can't find the answer to the question I heard. And, and you will hear that it's a lot. Objective. Yeah. It, it, the fact of the matter is, if there isn't one answer or things like that, it's not going to be able to uh, do like a Google search and come back with a million things that match it. It's looking for one thing that's going to match it. So the closer that you can uh, narrow it down, the better off you're going to have a chance that she's going to be able to answer it. Alexa, what car should I buy? I wasn't able to understand the question I heard. So, you know, it's going to be as honest as it can with the information you gave it. 
Alexa, what's the best Jeep Cherokee to buy? The top search result for Jeep Cherokee is off smart lower windshield mounting brackets LED light bar for 86 to 92 Jeep Cherokee XJ4 WD slash 2 WD 84 201 come in. Oh, Jim WD just ordered a slash 2 WD. It's $25.99 total. Would you like to buy it? So, give us your. No. Amazon, should I buy Amazon? I also found Jeep or, Cherokee uh, 1997 to 2001 window master control. Alexa, stop. $28 total. Would Alexa, stop. Sometimes if people are shouting in their house, it's probably because of that. <laughs> uh, we, we didn't, you, you asked which, which should you buy right now? Uh, we didn't have time to go into some of the home automation. But the home automation and the links are somewhat specific to, again, the skills that are out there and what's available. Currently at this time, from what I've read in some of the reviews, the Google Home does have more connections to the major hubs, the major home automation hubs, than what are available in skills for the dot. Uh, so the dot does support things like the Hue light bulbs and the Nest uh, thermostat and, and a few specific things, but it doesn't have a big breadth of home automation uh, interfaces yeah. yet. And, and I'd say with either of these, what you're going to run into is this, is this is, again, this is kind of a second generation, uh, uh, being that this is, uh, this is, it came out the end of last year. Uh, what's going to be available a year from now, two years from now, just like phones and stuff like that, it's going to evolve very, very fast. And, and whether they'll look like this or look like something else, who's to know? But buy something because it's going to give you value today. But if you like it, you're going to plan on upgrading and a year, two years, three years to something that's going to be that much better. Yes.